Welcome back to the channel. I am Kayla Simone. If you're new here, I'm gonna be your new favorite homegirl. Today, we're taking the show on the road and we're gonna go help my friend do the backsplash in her kitchen. I am super excited because I haven't done a project in a while. It feels like like a new project, start to finish. Um, honestly, maybe since I finished my mountains earlier this year. So like, it's been a minute since I've done a project. Um, and this should be like an easy one, but also fun. Because I actually do, okay, what's going on with the camera? Come on now. Okay. I actually do really enjoy tiling, especially when there's no mortar involved, which you guys will see today, how we are tiling the backsplash without any mortar involved. Um, it's just kind of like painting for me, like just kind of a therapeutic process. And you can just really see your progress all along the way, which is one of the reasons that I like it. Um, Cause it's a little bit of instant gratification, you know? So it's Friday noon. I definitely think that we can wrap this kitchen out this weekend. I'm hoping that today we'll be able to get all of the tiles laid and then tomorrow I can come back and grow and it'll just be like kind of a two day thing. Um, obviously we'll see how that goes. She, let me back up a little bit. She has a lower backsplash, like the normal backsplash area that she wants to do. But then she also wants to do up above her kitchen cabinets. So today I'm hoping that we can get all of the lower area done. And then if we have enough tile left and if we can get all the lower area done, then tomorrow I think we can do all of the upper area. And then on Sunday we will grow. Um, if for some reason we don't have enough tile to do the upper area, then I'm still hoping that today we can get all the lower area done and then tomorrow we grow. So I definitely think that this is a project, especially with two people, that can be done in a single weekend, but I'm also notoriously bad for not knowing how long things are going to take and for, like, really, really underestimating uh, timelines on projects, so this should be interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, what pattern 
did you want to do? So I'm going to do a vertical okay. offset. Vertical offset. Okay. Yay, that's what I was thinking. Choosing the tile layout for your project is really just personal preference. There's no right or wrong pattern. You just have to choose what suits your style and your project the best. So I'll run through a few of the most common tile layouts. This first one is a horizontal stacked layout. All of the grout lines match up, creating a grid pattern. Horizontal offset is your typical subway style pattern where each tile is offset 50% from the tile below it, creating staggered grout lines. When it's all installed, you'll be able to see a stair step like pattern in your grout lines. With small tiles like this, you'll use a 50% offset, and with larger tiles, you would normally use a 33% offset. A vertical stack layout has the longest edge of the tile going vertically, creating a tall grid instead of a wide grid. You can shift the rows of the tiles 50% horizontally. That's what we're doing to create a more unique offset pattern. Or if you want more of a traditional vertical subway style look, then you can shift each column 50% vertically. The next pattern is called herringbone and it's a little trickier to get right for beginners because of the math involved in order to perfectly center your pattern, but it's also more interesting than the other more basic patterns. And then this last one that I'll show you is one of my favorites. This is called a double basket weave pattern. It only works with tiles that are two times as long as they are wide, like a standard three by six subway tile like what I have here, but I love that it's really fun and unique while also still being very simple to install. So you want to tile up to like kind of close to here and then what you're going to have to do is put an extension box in here when oh, you take these out. So we don't have to worry about it now while we're tiling. Okay, okay. But after you actually go back to change the outlet, then you either want to get an extender box that goes in there and okay. I can send you a link to it. Or you can get these little like um, little plastic um, spacers basically and they go here I like see. behind the screw and behind this screw to like bump it out mm -hmm. so that it sits flush with the tile and then gotcha. you put your thing on top of it again okay okay cool 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 i think maybe we start here because i'm thinking that you would probably want a full size piece in your schluter instead of potentially starting in that corner and right. then by the time you get over here yeah like Based on the pattern, I don't think that we need to start in the middle and work our way out. Yeah. Like, I know some people do that, but I feel like with our pattern, it will be fine. I think it's more about, like, the cuts. Yeah. Yeah. So, so was, let's take yeah. a couple pieces and lay it out and kind of see what that looks like if we start with a full piece on the edge. We lay our Schluter on this side. I've never used Schluter with the mat. I saw a video with a guy doing it. And it was fine. Just stick it yeah. on there. Yeah. But okay. I was also wondering, I'm like, do you put it under the mat? Yeah. yeah. I was wondering that same thing. And I was thinking that you would probably have to put it on top so that the mat doesn't take up some of your thickness because I'm because you ordered the schluter for That's the, what I was like. Mean? We'll we'll lay all the muscle down first. And then we'll put the Schluter trim here, and you can start from, did you want Schluter trim on that end too, or did you want to just like start kind of behind the fridge and then go from there? Like just hide the edge, you know what I mean? I feel like it'd be easier to just hide the edge. Okay, that's what I put the Schluter do. trim on. Okay. Okay. So once we get the Schluter trim up here, then you can start tiling from here, and I'll start tiling from that side, okay. and then we'll meet in the middle so that your only cut pieces end up in that corner and you... You yeah. can like kind of cover it with like a pod or something, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, cool. Muscle bound is my favorite way to tile because it makes the process just so much faster and easier than using mortar. It's a tile mat, so basically it's just this big roll of double-sided adhesive that you stick onto the wall and then you stick your tiles onto that. It is permanent, so it works just as well as mortar does, but without any mess. It's really sticky though, so you do have to be careful where you place it because you don't want any debris or like dust or anything to get on it that's gonna prevent it from sticking to the wall properly. Just like any other kind of sticker, it will lose its stickiness the more times you re-stick it. So start by peeling a small piece of the backing off, roll it out slowly, and then smooth it as you go. So don't roll this part back up a little bit more just so that it's not sticking to everything. There you go. All right, and, and then, then just work your way down and keep unrolling it as you like oh, there we go. smooth. Like make sure this part has no bubbles first. 
before you put any more on the wall. So like do that, and then that's, I see. That way you can make sure that there's no bubbles and then just cut around that part. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Okay. We were chilling, getting out, standing on I told you to get out I didn't need a word that I said Cause I was hoping you would call me trim to line the outer edge of the tile so that we'll have a clean finished look on the edge instead of being able to see the side of the tile. It's the small details like this that really make a tiling job look super professional when you're done. Schluter trim comes in a bunch of different colors, finishes, depths, and profiles to complement any tile application. We're using the aluminum trim, so we did have to get a metal cutting blade for the miter saw in order to cut this. I typically prefer using the PVC kind because a normal blade can cut right through it no problem. Miss you, miss you, I miss you To tell the truth, I've been thinking about you lately I miss you, miss you, miss you, I miss you when you buy your Schluter trim, it's important to get the correct depth, so take a look at the manufacturer guidelines and the tile specs first. The long edge of the trim will go flat on the wall first, and then your tile is placed on top. The front edge of the trim should be flush with the face of the tile, and the entire side of the tile should be hidden. Because these are like zelige ish they aren't exactly like you'll see this line isn't exactly mm -hmm. straight all the way across so still use your spacers but pay more attention to this line right here to make sure that it's not like to make sure that your line stays somewhat straight across the top if that makes sense it won't be perfect because the tiles aren't perfect um, but it's better to use the line than to just try to use um, the tiles because eventually it'll it'll be all off if you try to use just the tiles so you just stick it on there and then pull your spacers out and stick your spacers in the new spot and along the bottom and then you just keep working your way over okay just sticking them on cool Yeah, they uh, did you fucking glue it? They probably never cleaned beneath the feet. Oh, so oh I guarantee you this bitch was stuck on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. 
tiger, so I was moving this side. It's like not budging right here. Now. 20 minutes later. Okay, let's try this way one more time. Oh, there it is. Yay! <laughs> Did anything break? No, but it's just like <gasps> drips and oh, stuff. Oh, that's so it's just disgusting. Like, <laughs> that's why it was kind of stuck. Oh my god. Alright, cool. Oh, <laughs> oh, gross. Ew. Oh, uh, not terrible. I mean, lots of hair, but. I will call, you will take, baby has your day, but today it ain't the same, every other word is a hum, you're okay, could it be that you are at the crib with another lady, if you took it there, first of all, let me say, I am not the one to sit around and be played, so prove yourself to me, if I'm the girl that you claim, why don't you say the thing?
spacing a little bit and it can throw off your lines because you can't always measure exactly perfectly. But I mean, once we got over that part and we're like, okay, the lines aren't going to be absolutely, you know, great, then I think it was like kind of smooth sailing from there. Um, so today will probably just be like a put our heads down and just like work, 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 laying tiles over and over, and over again. Um, but that's the part that I really enjoy. Just like the repetitiveness of it, I guess. Um, Ashton this morning, she had to run to the store, grab some more muscle bound so that she could finish doing the muscle bound up above the cabinets. So that should already be all done by the time I get there and I'll be able to just jump in and start tiling. So it's going to be a good day. place to start would be for us to like you said measure all of these pieces that we've got to fill in mm -hmm. to keep going straight up um, and then like once that pattern gets set right then we can oops sorry babe. now out of the kitchen then we can um, like go around and over okay mm -hmm. um, but I guess if we're gonna cut them then we might as well cut any tiles on this like lower level that need to be cut mm -hmm. all at the same time and just run them all through. Yeah, like get that part over with. Yeah. Okay. And not as scary because the blade isn't actually a blade. Like, it's not sharp. It's not going to cut you. It just um, grinds the tile down. Yeah. So everybody's always like, that's excuse me. Your fingers are so close. And I'm like, I definitely, you don't want to touch it while it's running. But, like, you can see there's no... It's not like there's no sharp edges. There's lots of corrosion from <laughs> tiles that I've cut, but no sharp edges. Okay, so let's see where we want to start. And then this, like, I don't know if it's called a fence or a guide, but it just keeps your tile straight as you're like cutting through it. So this is. One, two, past the big line. That's how I do all my measurements. One, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so cutting around outlets is actually like my favorite kind of cut because it normally means I get to take a chunk out of the tile and I don't know why, but that is just so fun for me. So I start by marking where the top and bottom of the outlet are gonna hit on my tile. And then I also mark how wide the section that I need to cut out is. After that, I'm left with kind of like a sideways U shape with the middle of the U being the part that I need to remove. Then using the wet saw, you're gonna make small straight cuts over and over in the section that you're getting rid of. You wanna make those cuts close together so that it ends up looking kind of like a fine tooth comb. Once you're done you just snap the little pieces off it's so cool and like honestly really fun i'm telling you i geek out over this every single time because i just i can't believe that i just cut a chunk out of a tile and it's so easy then i just run the tile back across the blade a few times to smooth out the edge and that's all there is to it this method doesn't just work for outlets though you can use it anytime that you need to fit a tile around something I'm
final day of helping my friend Tyler her backslash. I don't know why I said welcome. Like, this is the beginning of the vlog. It's literally the end of it. But anyway, I'm headed over to Ashton's house now so that we can wrap up her backsplash. Yesterday, recap of yesterday. We did not get as much done as we wanted to. I think I just, like I kind of warned you guys about, completely underestimated how much time it was going to take to do all of the little cut pieces. Um, yeah, so that took a very long, that was actually our whole day yesterday. I was over there for eight hours again yesterday. Um, and it was just us all of the full pieces along the bottom of the backsplash had already been installed from day one. And so yesterday was just cutting all of the small pieces to like fill in all of the sections. And that was, it just took a long time. It took way longer than I expected it to. I thought that that was gonna be half our day. Like I thought that would be like four hours and then maybe four hours spent um, tiling along the top. But I think number one, we just weren't moving as fast as we could have been. We weren't moving along as fast as day one. Number one, because it was more intricate pieces. Pieces had to be cut and then recut at times. Oh, me. Oh, wait. Oops, my damn phone. Um, some of the pieces had to be cut and then recut because they weren't perfect. They weren't the right size. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, it just ended up taking a lot longer than we thought. Um, last night slash this morning, Ashton said if she had energy, she was going to try to work on getting, um, sorry, this room is like literally terrible. I'm like sore if you try to dodge all the damn, um, pits in the road. I can't think of what they're called right now, but. I'm not driving crazy. I promise. It's really just the room. Um, so last night slash this morning, Ashton said if she had energy, she was going to try to tile all above the kitchen cabinets because she does want the tile to go up around the window, which we finished that part yesterday. Um, and then all across the top of the cabinets. Um, I definitely agree with her decision to do that. I think it's going to look really, really good. And I think anytime you can take the eye up, it makes the ceilings look taller. I'm not sure what height her kitchen ceiling is. I want to say it's probably eight feet. Um, so having that tile up there is really just going to elevate the look. Um, I actually wanted to do that in my kitchen. Um, put subway tile up there it's a long story why i'm not doing that anymore i will tell you guys at a later date but i can't wait to see what hers looks like with all of that tile up there because i think it's just gonna look so good and i'm like so obsessed with the color of the tile and how it's already looking with um just with the like before we even ground it because it's black it's a matte black tile, but it has multiple different colors and like variation as you guys can see. So it pulls out some of the green. It's almost like green black on some of the tiles. It pulls that out of the cabinet. Some pieces look a little bit more gray. Some pieces look a little bit more blue. And I just think that it's such a, it's such a better look than just doing like the flat one color. I think if she had just done a flat, like singular color, no variation tile, the kitchen wouldn't look as elevated as it's going to look. So I'm super excited to get the ground on there today. Um, one of us is gonna be working on grouting while the other one works on continuing to lay tile. Um, I don't know who's gonna do what yet. Once I get over there, I'll ask her and see like what she wants to do. Um, but I'm hoping that today we will be able to knock this out, you know, no problem because routing it isn't hard it does take a little bit of time but it isn't hard but it also isn't that much space so i'm thinking if i had to guess that grouting the whole bottom section will probably take about three hours um 
but we're gonna see. We'll see. I love making predictions and then like setting up my time lapse or whatever and going back and seeing how long things actually take me. Um, my only problem is that I don't ever commit that to memory for later. And so I just never know how long anything is gonna take. So I'm saying it now, I think it's gonna take three hours. We'll see how long it's gonna take. Um, she did go back and forth quite a bit on the grout color. She was originally going to do silver grout which, if I remember correctly, is kind of like a medium gray tone. Not too light, but it's definitely not like charcoal or anything. Um, and I low-key convinced her to go to, to charcoal route. Charcoal was her original thought, and then she pulled a couple like friends, co-workers, and they all said do the silver grout. And the only reason that I don't think that the silver grout good I don't think it'll look bad but the reason that I was kind of against doing the silver grout is because with a tile like this that has the kind of like wavy edges the imperfections on top of the fact that this was her first time laying tile and my like a third time doesn't make me an expert by any means not all of the grout lines are perfect some are a little bit wider some are a little bit skinnier um our horizontal line across isn't an exact straight grid because like I said the tile has a little bit of a variation in size to it it is a very it's as close as we can get to level like I don't really know how else to explain it it is level to the eye but when you get up close on it you can see that there's some variation in the tile if that makes sense um, and I've noticed with a lot of DIYers when they're using these types of tiles, they don't use a laser level and they just kind of go with the shape of the tile and they're like, oh, well, if this one's bigger, it's just going to be bigger. And what happens, it causes a ripple effect where like these tiles are bigger and then the row above them is now shifted up a little bit in that one section and the row above that. And it just carries on and your eyes immediately drawn to this area where something happened, something went wrong and there's no level line across anymore um and that issue is more noticeable when your grout contrasts the tile when the tile and the grout match each other or close to match each other you don't really have to worry about it as much um, because the grout just blends in with the tile the other thing the other like reasoning behind that is if you have contrasting grout you're focused on well, I guess I just kind of sort of said this. When you have contrasting grout, no matter what tile you use, no matter what the tile pattern is, um, your eye is going to be drawn to the grout lines. When you do a grout that matches the tile, your eye is now focused on the tile. So with this specific tile, because there's that color variation that we both really like, I just felt like it would be better to not do contrasting grout so now you can look at the different variation of color in the tile rather than be paying attention to what all of the grout lines are because they're so stark. Um, so for all of those reasons, she switched to charcoal grout. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to see it go on today. So just like a quick spoiler alert for the end. I will be able to show you the finished backsplash, but there are a couple things that are going to be missing when you guys see it at the end of this vlog, at the end of the day today. Um, she still won't have the outlets fully installed because she wants to hire an electrician to come in and swap out all of the white outlets that are there to black. Um, it's not my house, so I'm definitely not going to do any electrical work in it. I'll do that in my own house, in my own brand new builds where like I know what all the wires are, I know how you know, less risk. Her house was built in 97. I don't know what type of wires might be in those walls. Those those wires are almost as old as I am, so I'm not touching them. Um, so the outlet areas like still won't be done. Um, so it won't have like the cover plates on it. They won't be pulled out to be flush with the tile. So it won't be like a fully perfect moment of like reveal. But you guys will still be able to see exactly what the backsplash looks like, and it's still going to look really good. But I figured I would just throw in that little disclaimer now. 
because I know how y'all like to tussle in the comments and be like, well, why didn't you do this? And why didn't, and this still is, I know, I know, I know, I know. So yeah, it will still all be done. Hopefully we will be able to finish up the above area also, even if it makes for kind of a late night, just because I do really, really want, this is the last day that I'm gonna go over there. And I really want um, as much of the backsplash to be done as possible so that I can like really give you guys a final look. I wish that it was gonna be light outside when we finish so that you guys could get a good look at it in the daylight, but I would probably just have her send me some videos later. Um, Cause I already know it's gonna be dark by the time we're done. So I'm about to go pull up now. Let's get it. We're using premix grout for this project to keep things really beginner friendly, but I will say that I do prefer mixing grout on my own. The premix grout is just really sandy, so it takes longer to apply and it's a little bit harder to spread out. Whereas regular grout that comes in a bag where you just add water and mix it yourself, that's much easier and faster to spread because it's more of a thick like pancake batter consistency, whereas this pre-mixed grout is more like kinetic sand. I can lose when I'm with you How can I lose and miss the moment? You just do it, boy Nobody do body like you do I can To apply the grout, I'm using a grout float and just wiping the grout into the grout lines at a 45 degree angle. So I'm just going diagonal to all of my grout lines. You wanna make sure that you're fully getting into all the grout lines and not leaving a lot of grout behind to dry on the tile because that is a serious pain to clean off later. After about like 10, 15 minutes or so, go back over the section with a wet sponge and wipe all of that excess grout off of the tile. Just make sure that you don't dig any of it out of the grout lines because you want it to stay in the grout lines. You just don't want it to be on the surface of the tile. Again, don't let it dry on there. Keep rinsing your sponge in a bucket. Don't rinse it in the sink, rinse it in a bucket and then wipe until the tiles are clean. And then I also had to go back through and use a dry rag to wipe them down again, because like I said, this grout is super, super sandy. So just using the wet rag doesn't really wipe it all off as easily. Um, but then you're just gonna continue doing that same thing all along your tile, and that's how you grout. Refit our mission. <laughs> I have to go return my library books. I and I checked out some books from the library when we were there a couple weeks ago. And today is the day that they are due back, and I don't want to get a late fee. So I'm driving over there real quick. They're about to give some 30 minutes. So I'm just going back over there uh, so that I can return my library books. I don't know who I thought it was or how much time I thought I had checking out two library books. Love to read. I just don't really have the time for that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to return those. And then Ira wants his book renewed. And then I'm going to go back over to Ashton so that we can wrap up tiling. So, tiling. 
we definitely can finish routing the entire lower section today which would make this like for sure a good weekend three-day weekend project because we will have plenty of time today to route um, the whole bottom section like normal backsplash size section um, the tiles up above the cabinets we ran out of tiles when Ashton explain this in this vlog but she and I used to be co-workers when I was a new home designer we worked in a company we worked for a company that was a flooring and tile company and then we were like kind of contracted out to um, do design for builders and so when she ordered this tile that we're using for her backsplash um, they had a couple boxes of it already in the showroom that weren't being used and so she was able to get those boxes for free and then she just ordered more boxes well the number of pieces in each box wasn't the same so like the new boxes that she ordered when she calculated her square footage and how many pieces she would need or like how many boxes she would need based on square footage she went off of the newer box size the size that she was ordering and those boxes have 62 tiles per box well, the old boxes that she just got on the come up for free those boxes only have 42 tiles per box so we were or 20 pieces short times i think we had three or four boxes of that so that's like a whole box of new tiles short um yeah so that's how we ended up running out of tile so unfortunately i won't have like this like grand pretty reveal i already kind of told you guys about um i'm almost rear enemy anywho i already told you guys i wasn't gonna have like a full pretty reveal because the outlets weren't gonna be done but now the upper section also isn't going to be completely done um we did just as i'm sure you guys saw we were able to kind of um, just like tile up to a certain point with all of the tiles up above instead of going all the way across and then still having another row to do up above. If you didn't notice it in the last couple clips, when I get back there and I'm grouting, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so Ashton's wrapping up, putting the last of the tiles that we have up there. Um, and then I'm going to finish grouting across the bottom. I'll probably grout up around the window so that she doesn't have to worry about that. And then I think later when she orders more tile to finish that last little section above the fridge, um, then that's when she'll grout all across the top because there's no way that we we're going to have time for that today. Um, just because we were still placing the tiles up top today. If we'd gotten the, pla the tiles placed up top before we started today, we could have grouted the whole thing, um, just to give you an idea of like timing and how everything's working. So I've been over there for like five and a half hours. Then we took an hour, 45 minutes to break for lunch. Um, yeah, so let me go run these uh, little library books back into the library so that we can get back to the shop. Running fast from the way it was, jump quick to the paycheck. Running back to the strip club, I'm never going back, never going back. No, you can't make me. Never going back, never going back. They never take me. I've been enough of petty dudes. I've been enough of shitty news. I had a thing for dirty shoes since I was ten. Love dirty men alike. Today than cash today Ooh, I just take it day by day Nothing but love. 
Nothing but love for you. Nothing but love. Nothing but love.